My name is Jeremy Ferrick and I was made for music and music was made for me. It pulses through my veins all the time. Even even like even if I try to ignore it, I just have to make music. And I always believed it was just going to happen. Like it was just part of my fate, you know, like part of my destiny. And it did happen. I know, I know, I'm not on MTV, I'm not touring, but I've written hundreds of songs and I've gotten some praise, you know, here and there. Um, it seems like whenever I want to quit music, somebody encourages, somebody comes out of the blue and is like, so, what's going on with the music, you know? Um... The practical world would say I'm much too old at this point to go for the uh, career in the music industry at being 38 years old. Um, <coughs> I think that like when I was younger, I didn't consider, you know, uh, age in the industry is being so important when I when I was at the age where I guess I should have been hustling more because you know I started writing songs around 12 13 and you know um, I was like playing a lot of the guitar in my teens and 20s but I didn't have any I didn't start any bands which I should have done you know but I'm not I'm trying not to live in that world of should haves anymore you know I started playing in a band when I was 30. So that's how slow I go. I, I started, you know, writing songs when I was 12 and I didn't get in a band till I was 30. I mean, that's just like ridiculous. <clears throat> I guess I'm not a fast person. I do things in a very slow way. You know? And anyways, <clears throat> what inspired me to um, create this video today was I was listening to Paul McGinnis, the great uh, manager from U of U2 who recently stepped down from that position, um, gave it over to Guy Osiri. But uh, Paul McGinnis has been with U2 since pretty much the beginning. I mean, give or take a year, maybe from when they started. And a couple years before they actually put their first album out. He was the one that kind of got them going, really. Got their first American tours and everything running. So, uh... Anyway. Before he, um, was managing U2, he was managing a group called Spud. I believe they were called. And he says they were much too old. And how old were they? Oh, in their 20s. So I'm listening to this interview and I'm going, great. These guys are way too old and they're in their 20s and I'm 38. These guys, like, you know, they'd think I was crazy if I said, oh yeah, I still have a shot of having a band. And I don't know. Maybe there is some delusion going on here that I still think I can do something in the realm of music. But I just cannot give it up. It's the most crazy thing. I mean, I don't want to be one of those guys where like people are like, who's this guy still thinking he can do it? But then there's something in me that feels like I still can. I don't know. So, it's, it's a crazy thing, you know. Um, I just feel like I can't give up on it. It's just, it's not even me. It's not even like, you know, what I want. It's just something in me, you know? It's like, I take job after job, and then that's like, all I'm thinking about is playing music, you know? So, words of advice for people that are younger, 
you know, and want to be musicians and or artists of any kind or whatever you want to do is do it now and don't listen to anybody who tries to tell you not to do it because those people will get in your head and you and and and, and you can't blame them if you if you listen to them you know i can't blame anybody but myself so if you're 18 years old and you're trying to start a band go fucking live in your van get your practice space I don't care what you gotta do but just do it and don't listen to anyone who tells you you can't do it cause it's really a lot harder in the long run to not do it it's worth starving or whatever you gotta do for a little while just do it <laughs>